Hey guys, it's Kyle down here at LunaCycle. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble our newest bike, the Tellaria MX-5. First thing you want to do is cut the straps, find the parts box, and remove all the packaging. Alright, included inside the bike box, you will find a nameplate, the front fender, the keys, your little fork mud guards, um, enough oil for one oil change, and also instructions. Uh, you have your stem here, you have your stem spacer, uh, your front wheel spacers, stem bolts, pegs, and then the uh, tools you need to assemble the bike. All right, the first thing you want to locate is the headset spacer. Go ahead and drop that on your steer tube. Go ahead and put your stem in place and snug down this top cap. This top cap doesn't need to be crazy tight, but just get this nice and snug. And we will do a final tightening on the stem once we're done, but we can go ahead and sort of snug these bolts down. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and get your handlebars somewhat in place. So place the handlebars into the stem and go ahead and just snug down this faceplate. You do want to tighten these bolts evenly. So you don't want the top ones fully tight and you don't want the bottom ones fully tight. You do want a little gap on the top and the bottom. Next step is to remove the mounting plate for the rear brake and go ahead and install this on the left side of the handlebars. And again, you want a gap on the top and the bottom. All right, the next thing you want to do is install the little front mud guards. Uh, these go on the left and the right of the fork. They all use the same hardware, so it doesn't matter if you mix these up. Um, just grab a little three mil Allen and snug all these down. And on the brake side, there is a little plastic protector on the brake hose. You can just remove this. And when you're going to mount the little guide, go ahead and mount it right on this little piece of aluminum. It's going to keep your brake hose from moving around. And do the same on this side. Now we are going to be pulling the bike away from this wooden pallet. To make it a bit lighter, let's go ahead and open the battery lid. You just use your key on the right side of the bike. The whole lid detaches with these little hooks. You're just going to go ahead and pull this battery straight up and away. And now it's time to actually put this on the charger so it's fully charged by the time that you ride. All right, now it's time to remove the front axle from this wooden block here. To do that, you need to be sure all four of these pinch bolts are loose. 
and then grab your eight millimeter wrench and back out this bolt a few turns on the disc brake side. Um, this may pop out just by hand, but you may need to tap this with a rubber mallet just to kind of get the fork started. Then it is going to be time to fully remove this bolt, set it aside, and you can try pulling this out by hand. Sometimes it comes right out. Sometimes you do need to push on it with something. Um, the ball head of this 8 mil is pretty good. You can just kind of tap this axle all the way out. You have your axle removed. All right, next it's time to prop the bike up. If you save these two pieces of packaging from when you unpackage the bike, it's going to help you a lot if you're by yourself. Um, you go ahead and lift up the bike. Prop it up using these two cardboard blocks. Now it's time to install the front wheel. These two spacers may look identical, but there's one with a small line on it like that. Um, these are nearly the same size, but this one with the line is supposed to go on the disc brake side. Once you've got your wheel spacers in place, it's time to remove the little plastic brake pad block. You want to go ahead and guide the rotor into the disc brake and everything else will kind of line up. And the axle always goes in from the non-brake side. Now it's time to tighten down the bolt with our eight mil, this bolt onto the other side. You do want this pretty tight, tighten this down to 15 Newton meters. And then it's time to tighten the four pinch bolts. So get this guy nice and tight. And I do recommend you tighten the disc brake side pinch bolts first and tighten these ones after. And you wanna do these left, right, left, right, left, right and don't go over 10 Newton meters on these. Factory recommends eight to 10, but nothing more than 10. All right, now it's time to install the front fender. You have three silver bolts with three silver washers. It's time to just tighten these into place. And just snug all these down. It's easy as that. Easy as that. All right, now it's time to install your pegs. Telaria has made this easy for you. They've labeled right and left on the bottom side, and these are side specific. So go ahead and install these into the back hole. Get the nuts started by hand, and then if you have a socket, it's gonna save you a lot of time, or a ratcheting. Ratcheting opened end wrench like this, it's gonna just make this a lot quicker. When installing the left peg, be sure not to pinch this very delicate kickstand wire. So just be real careful when you're tightening this left peg. It's easy as that. All right, we're almost done, but it's time to properly align our front stem and torque it down. So you want to be sure this is pointing perfectly straight. And then there's a very high torque spec on this, 15 Newton meters. So grab yourself a decent size six and really crank down these two. And if you're happy with the bar position, go ahead and crank down the faceplate bolts too.
Now it's time to put our brakes where we want them. Some guys like these level, some guys like them angled down. But you just want to be sure they're both even, damn tight. Check that your throttle's not loose. Check that your regen lever isn't loose. And now it's time to plug all of these in. So you do want to spend the extra couple minutes and not do this wrong. If you damage your throttle pins, you're not going to be riding that day. If you damage your brake pins, you may still be able to ride, but it's you just caused some damage. So let's start with the brake. The brake is red, red, and you'll see two arrows. You want to carefully plug these in and plug these in all the way. Next, we got our throttle, which is going to be green, green. Again, line up the arrows and don't force anything. If it's not going, take a closer look at it and straighten out the pins if you need to. Next, we have our regen lever, arrow, arrow. And over on this side, we have some bigger connectors. Let's go ahead and start with the display. You do want to be real careful with the display. There's a lot of pins in this one. And again, you have arrow, arrow. We have our little light switch, which is going to be the red to the black. And lastly, we have the little brake sensor. These do come with two little rubbers that you can use to clean up the wiring. You can arrange these however you like. Just be sure that when you're done, you are able to turn the bars fully left and fully right without it pulling on the wires. Check. Now it's time to reinstall our battery. Battery just drops into place. And you may notice there is no breaker on the MX-5, so you don't have to worry about flipping a switch on and off when you remove the battery. Uh, the battery just gets plugged in, and you will hear a click when it's fully plugged in. These do have a removable battery lid. It just hooks onto these two little hooks on these two silver pins. And there is a tensioner system in here. Um, in your owner's manual, it tells you how to adjust this. But out of the box, we've noticed these put plenty of pressure onto the top of the battery to where your battery doesn't rattle around. But long story short, you take this little bracket out and turn this bolt clockwise to add pressure to the battery or counterclockwise to make the battery a little looser. So we're just going to go ahead and install our lid until it clicks. We can then remove the key. Really? All right, before you ride, you do need to open up the gearbox vent tube clip. Um, this is closed so oil doesn't come out during shipping. Um, this needs to be open whenever you're riding the bike and it only needs to be closed if you're going to transport the bike onto its side. So just don't forget to open this. The last thing you need to do is air up the tires. These are 32 PSI cold, so 32 PSI. And lastly, we're going to fire up the bike, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough on how this bike works. All right, now I'm going to walk through the controls of the Tolari MX-5. Grab your keys and go ahead and power up the bike. Give it a second to power up. You do have an updated color display here um, with different features. We'll make a separate video running through all the features, but long story short, it's gonna say your battery percentage here. It's gonna say your speed here. Your odometer is down at the bottom. Um, and then this little number here, one, two, three, and four, that's your regen. So when you let off the throttle, the bike will slow down for you. Um, all Tellarias need to get powered up with the kickstand, up before you can ride and then you also need to press this little hidden start button on the bottom of the throttle so once you press that your display is now going to say ready this m button here changes your riding modes you have three you have eco which is green you have sport which is yellow and then you have the very fast mode hyper mode which is red um, start off in Eco and Sport until you get comfortable, and then I'm sure you guys will all want to try Hyper Mode. 
The MX-5 has a light switch here. It also has a horn button for a very loud horn. Um, and then over on the right here, there's a new feature. This is a variable regen lever. So the bike will slow down for you uh, when you push this lever and you can press it a little bit to slow down a little bit, or you can press it all the way and it'll give you full level four regen. Um, this lever only works when your display is in level one regen. Um, if it's in two, three, or four, the bike's gonna regen by itself and this lever won't do anything. Um, regen only works when the battery is below 90% and then it stops at six or seven miles an hour. The regen does cut out. All right, guys, now that you've successfully assembled your Solaria MX-5, it's time to get out there and ride.